Welcome back to the Peric Project. Over time, I've heard a lot of different questions about God. And some of those questions concern how does God judge us? How does God view us? Now, what's fascinating is that in Mishnah 13 of chapter 3, we're taught something fascinating. We're taught that if a person is beloved on earth by other people, we're told that he is beloved by God. He becomes a role model for a Torah way of life. Now, what's fascinating is what makes a person beloved by other people? The Chavetz Chaim was a rabbi that lived a couple hundred years ago who was a Torah scholar, a giant of a person, but he was also beloved by people. Now, what's interesting is why did people love him so much? Did they love him because he knew a lot of Torah? No, they loved him because he was an honest person. He had integrity. He owned a grocery store and everyone knew that they could come to that grocery store because they would get the best produce and they would get treated fairly. So what this Mishnah is teaching us is that our honesty and integrity is so important because that is what makes us pleasant with other people. And if a person is pleasant with other people, we please Hashem because we are all Hashem's children. And just like any parent likes it when their child is treated well, when Hashem sees us treating other people well, that gives him pleasure that makes him happy with us and the flip side is also true that someone who is lax in their interpersonal relationships is also lax in their relationship with Hashem and in fact we're told that someone who who hurts another person whether it's financially or emotionally or any other way even Yom Kippur the holiest day of the the year doesn't grant them forgiveness unless they have asked the other person for forgiveness first. But of course, this doesn't mean that we have to become a people pleaser. Nobody can stay true to your values and to Hashem's values if they are a people pleaser. Instead, it means that we have to stay true to our values and we have to treat other people with integrity and honesty and with care. And even Mordechai, the uh, of from the poem story we're told that he was beloved to most because even though he was a leader of the generation he was someone who stood true to the to their values and someone who stands true to the values will be beloved by a lot of people but not everyone And on the note of staying true to our values, in the next Mishnah, Mishnah 14, Rabbi Dosa ben Harkonnes is going to talk about four different things that can distract a person from our real mission on earth. So the first thing he's going to tell us about is he tells us about oversleeping. What does that mean? Obviously, sleep for our health is important but he's talking about someone who's sleeping beyond that perhaps the person is sleeping beyond the time of morning shema or he's had a good night's sleep he or she has had a good night's sleep and they're just sleeping in time that could be used to pursue spiritual growth and they don't have a legitimate excuse for that sleep that he's saying is damaging and in fact this can also be a metaphor for the morning of one's life. What, is, what does the morning of one's life mean? If we think back to our youth, our youth is when as a, as a child, as an adolescent, we believe we have that confidence that anything is possible. And as much as we can hold on to that as, as we grow up and we get older is, is great. In fact, our there's an incredible story told of the Panovich rabbi. He came to Israel after the Second World War and he came to the, what's now the city of Bnei Barak, which was then just a desolate hill. And he turned around and he said, here we're going to have the greatest, largest yeshiva. And the people were, that he was with looked at him and they thought, Unfortunately, he must have lost his mind. He's been through so much suffering in the Holocaust. The poor poor man's lost his mind. And he turned around to them and he says, and they said to him, you're dreaming. And he turned around to them. He says, you're right. I am dreaming, but I'm not asleep. And because he had that vision and that optimism of the, his youth, he made it a reality. And nowadays, Bnei Barak is the teeming city that, that, that it is. 
The second thing is he warns against indulging in midday wine. What does he mean by that? He talks about drinking a glass of wine in the middle of the day when we're fully functioning, when, as opposed to in the evening when you want to sit down and relax. It's obviously relaxation is important, but when the mindset of life is a party, which sometimes going to the pub and 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 having a drink can can engender in our mind when that sort of mindset becomes the be all and end all when it stops being a way to relax when it becomes the be all and end all of life that is what he is warning against the third thing he warns against sounds strange at first but listen to the wisdom that he's teaching us here he warns us against childish chatter what does he mean he means that we as adults are supposed to be role models to the next generation and we must influence them and to influence them we have to maintain a balance we have to on the one hand attempt to understand children but at the same time we can't act too foolishly as what 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 i've heard and i think rings true is that a parent says i don't want to be my child's friend because our kids can have many friends i want to be his parent the same thing we can't say i, I don't want to we, we have to say we i don't want to be the the youth's friends i want to be their influencer on another note sometimes we work so hard to provide for our children to give values to our children that we forget sometimes to invest in ourselves there's a, a, a an anecdote that i'll share with you that someone came to the rebbe rebbonim of peshisra and he said and the the rabbi asked him what are you doing and he says i'm working and i'm working and he says he, he was working a lot he says why why do you have to work so much he says i want to provide financially so that when my child is an adult i will be able to support them so that they can study torah and they can invest in their spiritual growth and and the rabbi turned around to him and he says you know how many generations i've heard that from and you know what your child is going to do? They're going to do the same thing that you are. They're going to work and work and work so they can provide for the next child. He says, I'm waiting to see that child that is so worthwhile, generations and generations and generations sacrificing themselves for. So what he's telling us here, what he's reminding us here, is that the best way to influence the next generation is not by putting ourselves down to their levels, but by understanding them and maintaining our values and investing spiritually in ourselves the third thing is he he tells us to avoid sitting at the gathering of the ignorant what does he mean by that what he's telling us here is that again there's nothing wrong with light conversation but when you have light conversation among people that are spiritually minded Torah people, their like conversation is still of value. It's refreshing. It's dignified. On the other hand, people that are not that way inclined, that are not necessarily spiritually directed, their light conversation may be about other people. It may involve gossip. It may involve slander. It may involve off-color humor. And he's telling us to stay away from this. As as I, I once saw someone written that small people talk about other people and he's telling us to avoid those sorts of gathering and he tells us that these four things they remove a person from the world wow that strong language what does he mean he means it undermines our potential for eternity because life is an investment we have a soul and every mitzvah that we do every time we remind ourselves of what we are really here for of our true value and our, and our true mission we are investing we are investing in our soul we are investing in ourselves we are investing our, in, in our future generations we are investing in eternity and whenever we we live a life that takes us away from that then we are squandering that investment so he's reminding us that life is an investment and we have to use the opportunity to invest in ourselves in our future generations and our eternity